Whoa! Saints win 30 to 28. Will Lutz, 58 yard field goal. Would have been good from 76. Are you kidding me? A win is a win is a win is a win. Against one of the great teams in the AFC. Saints over Texans, 30 to 28. And right off the top, you know my name by now, at Carter the Power. I want you to give me a one word answer to describe that game, okay? And you know I like to get cute and wordy sometimes. So I'm gonna give you this. That win was Lutzy. Yes, instead of Gutsy, it was Gutsy. But Will Lutz put them over the top. That's L-U-T-Z-S-Y. With that 58 yard field goal, that was nuts. A career long when you needed it the most. So we have a lot to get to in a little bit of time. So, Chat Sports, you already know what to do. Subscribe to the best sports YouTube channel in all the world at Chat Sports, okay? Offensive grades. Let's go on ahead and start with an A. A Saints offense that struggled in the first half, turned things around in the second half. You can't give any other grade to an offense that put up 510 yards of production when you really needed it, okay? No doubt about it. So right now in the comments section, after you give me your one-word answer to describe this Saints win, I want you to give me that offensive grade in my comments right now. A, B, C, D, or F. This is no doubt in my mind an A. However, you know, we could talk about the great performances of Drew Brees, Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara. But those three, none of them was the most impressive offensive player of the night. We will get to that in just a moment. Now on to the defense. C plus, okay? Let's go C plus because you did get six sacks. You did have some big stops. There were some players that stepped up, but C plus, okay? C plus. I know a lot of you have some more choice words that you said, especially on that Kenny Stills touchdown reception, but C plus I think is the right grade there. And then for special teams, an F. Kidding, A. That's one of the best Saints special teams performances ever. Of course, the field goal was great. Thomas Morstead was pinning people back left and right. So I, I have to go with an A right there. Don't forget to subscribe to Chat Sports on YouTube right now. That's just go down on the video at Chat Sports and like them on Twitter. Follow at Chat Sports. So let's go through some individual offensive grades. Of course, we're going to evaluate Drew Brees, and immediately you think A. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grade this as if Drew Brees would grade it. I think he would give himself a B minus. Yes, his numbers ended up being very impressive. 32 of 43 for 370 yards and two TDs. However, an interception in, a, in the red zone is something experienced quarterbacks should never do. And the interception was a bad one. Threw it right to the Texans linebacker. That, it's not good. And I know Drew Brees would probably give himself a D, knowing how hard he works and how hard he is on himself. Alvin Kamara, you got to go with an A-. minus. He's had far better games statistically. But goodness gracious, 13 carries for 97 yards. And on top of that, receiving the football, seven catches for 72. He had that big slant route over the middle that was uh, for a huge gain. Michael Thomas, you can even give him a similar grade, an A minus. He's had bigger games statistically, but 10 catches for 123 against heavy coverage. Fantastic performance from Cant Guard Mike. So both of them get A's. But it's time to unveil the true MVP of the Saints offensive performance. I want you to think about this, okay? This to me is the most mind-blowing thing. It wasn't the crazy 58-yard field goal. It wasn't Deshaun Watson going off. It wasn't rookie Chauncey Gardner-Smith with or Chauncey Gardner-Johnson with 
the roughing the kicker on the extra point, which was a good call, I hate to say. It wasn't that. There were so many crazy things. But the one thing that no one is talking about right now is that arguably the greatest defensive lineman of this era had this many tackles. This many tackles. J.J. Watt had zero tackles. They didn't even mention his name on the broadcast, and he was healthy. That's how great the Saints offensive line was. Now, some of you would say, oh, well, he's washed up. That's probably it. But Teron Armstead and that offensive line, that was the real MVP. The protection was immaculate. Drew Brees has played better games, as have all the other Saints offensive players. But that offensive line with, by the way, a rookie center, his first game is a Monday night football game. I know the Texans are still recovering, losing Jadavian Clowney. We could talk about that all we want, but only gave up one sack. And also on top of that, 11 or excuse me, seven yards rushing. That was the average yards per rush for that Saints offensive line. That is what you want to see. So, Saints offensive line, by far to me, by far, was the MVP of the night and the most impressive performer, okay? Let's connect on Twitter, at Carter the Power, okay? Not going to lie to you, my tweets are not straight ahead. They're, they Breakdowns can get very deep. If you want to see all the checks that Drew Brees made at the line of scrimmage, I have a tweet for that. Go to at Carter the Power because I want to break down this play just, just really quickly, okay? There's six seconds left on the clock, and Drew Brees immediately, when he saw that the Texans inexplicably put their safeties 30 yards to the back, he shifted the entire play. He did. You could see it. He's checking to where all five of the Saints wide receivers ran eight-yard comeback routes, and he went to the receiver that had the softest coverage, which was Ted Ginn Jr. I broke the whole thing down. It is quarterback mastery, okay? So just go to uh, my Twitter account, at Carter the Power. I'm also on Instagram, Snapchat, all the stuff, TikTok as well, because I love doing funny videos on there, at Carter the Power. Now on to the defensive side. I'm not going to do individual players, okay? That's a little too tough to do. We're going to go unit by unit. Defensive line, B+, plus, okay? Cam Jordan had kind of a quiet night, but Trey Hendrickson stepped up for him, okay? Everyone's talking about Marcus Davenport being that other end. Hendrickson was fantastic. He beat Laramie Tunsil on that clutch sack late to give the Saints the, the, the chance to win this game. So Trey Hendrickson... Fantastic performance for this guy. Um, the overall defense line, uh, they, they were able to help the defense get six sacks. Six sacks. They stunned it well. The only thing that the only reason they didn't get an A is because the Texans running game was lethal. Okay. 180, 180 yards rushing. They averaged 7.8 yards per rush. Now a lot of you would think, okay, those were Deshaun Watson scrambles. No. Carlos Hyde and Duke Johnson were amazing. Hyde averaged 8.3 yards per rush. Duke Johnson averaged 6.3 yards per rush. Okay? That can't happen. The defense line has to be better against the run. So we're going to go with a B plus. Right now, I want you to give me your Saints def defensive grade for the entire unit. Okay? A, B, C, D, or F. A little bit earlier, I gave the Saints defense... A C plus that was very generous to a unit that could not stop Deshaun Watson. They did better in the second half, but goodness gracious, um, in, in big spots, they, they were really poor tonight. Uh, the linebackers, I'm going to go with the C plus. Uh, Anzalone had his ups and downs for this game. Demario Davis had his highs and lows. I'm going to go with the C plus for them. And then the secondary. <laughs> What, what are we going to do? We see it every single year. D, D, D. I don't know why I'm not giving him an F. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore, I know he's going up against DeAndre Hopkins, arguably the best wide receiver in the NFL. The only problem is that all night he was burned. 
really, really, really bad and in big spots in the red zone and especially late. P.J. Williams burnt by Kenny Stills. Kenny Stills? Kenny Stills? Not good enough. I thought Von Bell was decent. He led the team in tackles. He also had a good preseason. But still, the Saints defensive backs, I don't know what I don't know what you do. Um, but I don't know if you make changes. God. I, I don't I don't know. I, I don't know. They they were they they were that rough. So so yeah, it, it it was nuts. This whole game was just crazy. It was just crazy. And it shows you how important coaching is. Like every coaching can make just a very little difference in every last little game that's out there. And um, Bill O'Brien, that horrible coaching mistake to play his safeties back was ultimately to me the difference. That allowed Will Lutz to have that kick. And um, and yeah, you know, I gave uh, the special teams an A, but the roughing the kicker on the miss extra point, I know it was a rookie, Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Um, you know the ironic thing? I do think the Saints are eventually going to give him a shot to play in the secondary. I think he could be a really good safety uh, for the Saints. So, the secondary, it doesn't get any easier. Next week they play the Los Angeles Rams. Arguably the best play caller in the NFC, Sean McVay. You got to go on the road. And on top of that, you have to guard Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, uh, Brandon Cooks, a former Saint, and then Todd Gurley coming out of the backfield. And Tyler Higby, too, another great uh, uh, Rams weapon. That's going to be hard, okay? So, before we get out of here, will the Saints win on Sunday at the Rams? Type Y for yes. Type N for no. I'm going yes. I am. I think the Saints have karma on their side. They'll ride the momentum. I know it's going to be a short week of rest, but the Saints will find a way to get it done. Now, before we get out of here, I'm at Carter the Power. I want to connect with you on social media. I follow back. Also, when you comment below, my track record proves this. I respond to literally as many comments. I know we get thousands of them. I try my best to get to all of them. I would like to share this. My boy Yoder sent me uh, a, a screenshot of a group chat. And Alicia, now, you know one thing I haven't said this entire video? She was just assuming that I was going to yell, who that nation throughout the video. I didn't even say who that until now. But see, you've already made me say it, Alicia. So, who that nation? There you go. That's for you, Alicia. Now, and these are all people that work at Chat Sports. Harrison. Really? Who who names their kid Harrison? Okay. Who gives your who gives her son a last name for a first name? It's kind of like uh, the someone that's named Carter. Who gives a last name? What is that? Really? Harrison? You share the same first name as the most overplayed player in the NBA. Really? Harrison? And the guy who died in Star Wars. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Anyway, Harrison said, of course, Carter is going to bring the pom-poms back. He also cracked a little joke here. My boy Mitchell Rince. I'm not bringing the pom-pom backs. I'm the pom-poms? I mean, who would ever have a pom-pom? Okay, there you go. And James, who, who's editing this video, he said, odds that Carter is going to pour some liquid on his head to start this video. Okay, this is the end of the video. Okay. Not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. Just because I'm out of water. There's a little right there. You get it? Ah, there you go. They all lost their bets. They were all betting on if I was gonna do any of these things. So, there you go. Anyway, that was an inside joke. None of you probably are gonna watch that. At Chat Sports on YouTube, I'm at Card of the Power. On to week two. On to LA. Chat Sports. Pay for me to go out to L.A. because I'll do it. See ya.